I know this sounds weird because you're used to thinking of tangents with trigonometry. Tangents are a type of line with a circle um, that really, I mean, I'm sure there's probably some link somewhere to the trigonometry term tangent, um, but it's not real obvious, okay? So I would not stress out about trying to relate this tangent to trig tangents. Here's what a tangent is. A tangent to a circle is a line that's in the same plane as the circle, meaning it's not like sticking up and down next to the circle, that intersects the circle in exactly one point. And that one special point is called the point of tangency. So a tangent is a line that sort of just brushes up against the edge of the circle and hits it in exactly one spot. Most of the time if you draw a line with a circle, it hits in two. This hits in exactly one. Have you ever heard the expression going off on a tangent? No. I go off on tangents many times. Um, the expression going off on a tangent usually means like that you go off topic in conversation. Like I'm up there teaching and all of a sudden I start talking about oh, like right something crazy. Yeah. Oh, like Mr. Zuber? Possibly. Probably all of us at some point. Okay? Um, but here's where that comes from. Is it's like, this was where your conversation was. And you started someplace related to whatever you were talking about, but then just kind of took off in a different direction. So you'll hear that expression sometimes, like someone went off on a tangent about blah, blah, blah. And it means something that was initially related to what you were talking about, but not exactly. Isaiah? So tangents are like ADD. A little bit. A little bit. Okay. Yeah, I guess if I guess if you're thinking with ADD, you're always kind of on a tangent somewhere. So probably. <laughs> okay. Important important theorem here. The radius tangent theorem. Um, a line is tangent to a circle. It is a biconditional. If and only if it is perpendicular to the radius at the radius's endpoint on the circle. I want to explain this to you, but you're not listening to me right now because you're writing, so I will let you write. If and only if. And then I'll explain. Okay. And you can go ahead and write down that other theorem, too, and then we'll talk about both. Um, it would, well, that is just a single radius, but it's possessive. It's like that endpoint belongs to the radius. I probably could have done away with the second S and just wrote radius with an apostrophe, but I think that's iffy grammatically. Yeah. What's with the musical chairs? Oh, I don't want to be anywhere today because I'm okay. Six, two, six, one, two, right? Okay. Selfie can't sit on top of the chair. Isaiah, you're going to be a little selfie. Just if you talk. Guys. So, the important part of that first theorem is that. Anytime you draw a tangent to a circle, like this line here is a tangent to this circle, um, and then you draw a radius up to that point where the line hits the circle, that angle that's formed is always, always, always a 90 degree angle. You know what's nice about 90 degree angles? You can do trig with 90 degree angles. So this is going to let you do a lot of things. You're going to have a lot of problems where you have to like connect this to this, and then you have a right triangle, and then you know all kinds of things you can do with a right triangle. Isn't that exciting? Okay, that you've got a right angle there. You can make a triangle. 
And a related theorem for you, guys. If two tangents share a common end point, so if they're both coming from the same point outside of the circle, and you measure from that common point to the place where they hit the circle, that length is going to be the same in both of them. Okay? So this distance from here to here is going to be the same as this distance from here to here. Gentlemen, you with me? Thank you. Okay. So it tells us that segment YZ is tangent to circle X at Z. Okay, so this Z is a point of tangency. Okay. What kind of triangle is that then? Right. A right triangle. That's right. This would be a right angle. Okay, this is a right triangle. And we know that because we know YZ has to be perpendicular to XZ. That's what that radius tangent theorem told us. Okay, it says if the radius is 5 and ZY is 10, find XY. So let's get our numbers on there. The radius is 5. Where does that go? ZX. ZX is the radius, yep. And ZY is 10, that's right. Pythag. So 5 squared plus 10 squared equals C squared. Okay, that's going to be, let's see, 25, and so that's going to be 125 equals C squared. It's going to be 11 point something. 11.1. Okay, so your length of XY would be 11.18, but you're absolutely right. That's why that radius tangent theorem is important, because when you get right triangles, there's lots of stuff you can do with right triangles. Okay? Then it says find the area of that triangle. How do you find area of a triangle? Like, base times height. One half base two. times height. Look, that triangle's really weird. It's all like upside down and stuff. How do I know which two are the base and the height? Five and ten. Why? Because X is I Because they make the they make the right angle. Yeah. Okay, so your two sides that make the right angle, that's your base and your height. So we would say area equals one half times five times ten, which is going to work out to be 25. No, yeah, 25. Yeah, 25. 25 square units. Bryce, can you put that down, please? Good with that? This says draw the line T tangent to circle Z. And label all information appropriately. This is kind of like that example we did yesterday where we had to draw the stuff. So if I want this to be circle Z, where does the Z go? Oh, Z. Center. Okay, so the center of the circle is Z. And I want to draw line T tangent to circle Z. So I want my line T to just brush against the edge of the circle. And you can put it anywhere you want. I'm going to have a hard time doing with this with the stylus, but do the best I oh, can. Oh, nice. Yeah, close enough. Whoa. So we're going to call that line T. <laughs> Just darken that in. That's my point of tangency. I'll take it with two of them. Okay. And then what else could I write in here? I could make a radius from Z out to this point of tangency, and then that means this would have to be a right angle. Okay. Could you just connect it like two? And we can make a triangle. You could make a triangle. Yeah, I mean, you could make a triangle if you wanted to. We don't have any other measurements to do anything with that, but I, I certainly wouldn't mark that wrong if you did. Okay. If ZY and YW are tangents, what are true about those triangles? Oh, they're equal. Okay. Bryce has a theory that this triangle... ZXY and this triangle WXY are equal and I'm sure by that he means congruent. Yes. Let's see if we can prove that. I already got it. Okay. Tell me something I know about those triangles. Bryce. Angle Z and angle W are both 90 degrees. Okay. So Z and W both 90s. Good. Um, there is a problem on your homework that asks you to justify this, asks you to write this all out. I'm just kind of making some markings in the picture. In your homework, you will have to, like, explain why is that a right angle. Okay. Castor, what else do we know? <coughs> they both share um, XY. Okay, so they share side XY. 
So that side's congruent to itself by what? Do you remember? Reflexive property. Good. Good job, Sophie. Okay. One more thing I know. Rihanna? Um, hmm. If those two angles are congruent? Um, you could say that. The problem is, okay, that's true because we know that the triangles are congruent, but I think you're kind of saying, like, what you're saying wouldn't work unless we already knew the triangles were congruent because we don't know for sure that these arcs are congruent. I mean, they are because the triangles are congruent, but... We don't know that yet, if that makes sense. Something else that we know, Bryce? Um, X, W is equal to X to Z. Why? Um, because they're both radius. Because they're both a radius of the circle, right? So these are equal. I got another one. Yep. Um, Z to Y and Y to W are equal. Because um, of that corollary, right? Yeah. Yeah, we just learned that today, uh, right? Radius uh, related theorem. Yep, we learned that if you have a point outside the circle and you draw tangents from that point, that those two segments are equal. So now what can I say? Sass. Not sass. Um, well, okay, sass would work. <laughs> sass would work, I take that back. You just... Yeah, we could do side, angle, side. Sure. What else would work? Side, side, side. Actually, we could have gotten there before Bryce even gave that last one. Yeah, we could have. Okay. Bryce gave us this one, but if we had just had these two, these are right triangles. What's that special one for right triangles? HL, right? Hypotenuse leg, which would have been this and this. Okay? So you could have actually justified that in a bunch of different ways. But we can say that those triangles are congruent by either SSS or SAS or HL. If I was on a test, would you want to name all of them? Or could we just nope, you could just name one, but you would also have to name, like, like why did we know these were congruent? You know, why did we know these were congruent? You would have to justify it a little bit more. All right. okay? okay? But you could just go for one of them. <laughs> be good. Okay, let me see if I can get rid of some of the scribbles there. I want to get rid of some of them. Okay. It says if angle ZYW is 88... So this angle is 88. Okay. What is the measure of arc ZV? This right here. Now this might kind of go back to what Rihanna was talking about a little bit. Here's the thing. If this angle is 88, what do you know about these two smaller angles? Okay, they have to, they have to be equal to each other, right? Because we just showed that the two triangles were equal. So I know that this angle in here is 44. And this angle in here is 44. Okay, so I got you started. How does that help you? Bryce, what do you think? I was just thinking, wouldn't the, um, the angle 88, mm -hmm. would that be, um, would that be 88, would the U, angle U, would that be 44? Hmm. Um, no. No. Because that 88 is not the measure of the arc. Okay, if this were 88, then we could say that's 44, but this angle is 88. It's actually close, though, but that's kind of a coincidence. Kyle, what do you think? Mm, oh, um, no, because that angle is outside of the circle. The 44 is outside of the circle. But you've got the right idea. There's just another step we need to jump in between. Nick, what do you think? Okay, yeah, let's figure out angle X. 46 degrees. What's this? Why is it 46? Because angle W is 90 degrees. Okay, so we know this is 90 up here, right? And we know this is 90. So if we've got a right triangle here and we've got 44 and 90, we could subtract that from 180 and find that this angle in here is 46, <coughs> right? Yeah. What kind of angle is that, that 46? Um, central or inscribed? Central. Central. So what is the measure of this arc? 46. 46, yeah, because the 46 is the central angle. Remember, the central angle just matches the arc. 
So arc ZV would be 46 degrees. Okay. Now it wants me to find the measure of angle U. I got this now. Thoughts about angle U. Bryce. It says um, the arc of ZV is 46. You would double that to go to Z to W. Okay. And then you would so this whole arc would be 92. Then you divide it by, by 2. Okay. So this whole arc from Z to W, let me find a better color here. From here to here is 92. Yeah, green's not good. That's good to keep using it. Okay. It's really cute. From here to here, 92. And then I'm going to cut that back in half because U is an inscribed angle, so U would be half of that, which also happens to be? 46. 46. Yep. Um, it is 14.5. Yep. Because you know that's my favorite thing to do. The answer is 2. Okay. This problem's going to show up. Hey, guys. This problem's going to show up on your test on Friday for sure. This is a pretty hard one to, to reason out by yourself. Once I show you the mechanics of it, it's not so bad. But I would, yeah. Um, you don't necessarily have to write down the entire question. You might just want to make a note of, like, you're on top of a 200-foot tower and the radius of the earth. You don't. No, nobody does. Ain't nobody got okay? So I would maybe jot down for yourself that you are on top. Or I could just let you figure this out by yourself. Okay. Um, I would jot down that you're at the top of a 200-foot tower and what the radius of the Earth is. So where are you on the Earth? You are on top of a tower on top of the Earth. Where is the tower? Here's what I would do. Draw your Earth. Here. Okay. It is a sphere, but we're just going to simplify and make it a circle. Okay. Actually, just kidding. Let me, um, I want some more space on top of my circle. Okay. So there's your circle. So it's just a circle. And. You've got a tower standing on top of the surface of the earth that's 200 feet, right? That is a huge tower. Okay. 200 feet on top of the surface of the earth. And what this is asking is the line to the horizon. If you were standing on top of that tower and looking out in this direction, you would be able to see along a tangent line. But your vision would cut off right here at this point of tangency. That's the horizon right there. Okay. Like when you look out, like if you're at the ocean, and you can see that line where sort of the, your vision stops, I am where the world that's is. the curve of the earth, and that's like a tangent line. You're seeing along a tangent, but when you hit that point of tangency, you can't see past that. I'm floating extremely like, okay. that line of tangency. Mm-hmm. What piece of information have I not put in here yet? The radii. Okay, so the radius of the Earth they gave me was 3,960 miles. So from this center, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to draw a radius up to that horizon point. And why do I like that? Okay, but it makes what kind? It makes a right triangle, right? Right. So this is a right angle here. Right. And I know that this is 3,960 miles. Where else would I have to draw it to make this a complete triangle? Oh, the top, the tower. Tower. Can I draw it up to the tower? Yeah. And then back down. And so then this is also 3,960 miles. <coughs> well, can that be a total? You would combine them, but what am I going to have to be careful of? Uh, 200 feet. It's 200 feet. Yeah. So take 200 and divide by 5,280. I'm going to need somebody else to do that. Um, 0 0.03788. 0 0.0... I missed that next one. 3. 3.7? Three yeah. Oh, so like 3.8 it would round to? 
Yeah. If I heard you right? Yeah. Okay. I would go a few decimal places on that mm -hmm. since that decimal is so tiny. So basically that 200 feet is really 0 .038 miles. And now I'm going to set up what? Pythag. Yeah, now this is just a Pythag problem. Um, remember, this is your hypotenuse, okay, because it's across from the 90. So I'm going to say 3,000, uh, I'm going to move this up a little bit. Let's do this down here. 3,960 squared plus B squared. What do I put for my total length of this then? 3,960.03. Good. 3,960. You would think that doesn't make that much of a difference, but it does. Okay, can someone help me with 3,960 squared? It's a very small number. One five. I can tell you, but I can't. Like, Go ahead. That's okay. One five six eight one nine zero zero point nine six. This one has a point. Three nine six zero squared. Travis, what are you doing? I think you did the other one. Oh my goodness. What? Oh, I didn't square root that. Okay, hold on. It's hey, minutes. no one else was typing. I got it. Hey, one five six eight one six zero zero. Is that what you got, Tyler? I got fifteen million six hundred eighty one thousand six hundred. Okay. Why do I need point nine six? Because you did the. I think you did this one. Is that what you told me to do? No, I told you to do the thirty nine sixty. But that's okay. That's okay because I told everybody to do it, and Travis was the only one doing anything. I would have done it. Thank you. I it. Okay. okay. Plus b squared. Power three. Equals. All right, Travis, do you still have that number for the other one? Yeah. Go ahead. One five six eight one nine zero zero. Point. Point nine six. There we go. Point nine six. Okay, now let's subtract this monstrosity. Um, that's a, it's, it's probably going to come out to be like three hundred point nine six, I think. Yeah. That's a, that was really hard to subtract. Can we do it again. So. so B squared equals that. And then let's take the square root of that. Okay. And I get 17. Yep. And that's 17.34 miles. So that means from the top of a building, that height, you could see if there were not other buildings or anything else in your way. That's what it means when it says no other obstructions. You could see 17 miles. Now, are your eyes good enough to see 17 miles? Uh, yes. But you would be. There would be 17 miles ahead of you that you would have a sight line of. Okay.